Hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Chat, episode 18. Can you believe it? We're 18 years old already, and now with the cancellation of the Beastcast, we're the number one podcast in the universe. That was my joke! Can you <laughs> believe it? It is absolutely incredible. And joining me, as always, is my trusty steed who believes the Joker is the best villain of all time, Ian Gibson. That's insulting, quite frankly. <laughs> I knew it would be. Dare you. you say we live in a society all the time. Don't deny it. <laughs> uh, so also, we do. Uh. Also joining us from Save Data is David. David, how are you? Uh, I'm doing better now that I finally got my car back. I missed the <gasps> podcast because my car was in the shop for like I... two extra hours. <laughs> I was wondering where you were because I tuned into uh, around the monitor. It was like a skeleton crew. I was like, who? are these people the car was supposed to be done at three podcast is at 4 30 for me for me I'm west coast and at like three is when my my car is supposed to be done at like 3 30 still i got in a call and i was like hey, zach i might be late <laughs> like four they still hadn't <laughs> called me and i'm like i don't think i'm making the podcast oh <laughs> that's funny because i got my car fixed I've had my car for a while now and it's had a recall in it, but it wasn't like a important recall. And when I lived in Jersey city, I didn't have it. So now that I'm driving again, uh, I finally brought it to like the local Ford place and they're like, yeah, it'll be done in three hours. And it was like eight hours later. And, th and thank goodness I didn't, cause I was going to wait there and read a book. And I was like, thank goodness I didn't do that. Uh, and I think because of that, the guy ended up giving me the oil change for free. And I was like, okay, cool. Something. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was just, it was also nice to finally, the, like, it was like a fuel tank deformation and it made my, uh, I don't know if it's the pistons or whatever, like stutter when you hit the gas. And I got so used to it that That's now not, when, what? when I drive, it doesn't do it now. you get that fixed earlier? What the hell? <laughs> because it wasn't bad for the car. Like it was just like a recall thing. I don't know. I'm lazy very lazy folks we are a gaming podcast we talk about games and mechanic stuff here because we are hardcore boys we're not men um, with a z. boys with a z uh first off before we talk about the news we got to talk about what you been playing uh i'm gonna start off with david what you been playing uh i believe i've been playing one game that's the same as you will and that's horizon zero dawn it's true uh, as of Early this week, late, late last week, I forget which, uh, finished the main campaign and the expansion DLC is pretty oh. sizable. I'll call it an expansion. Um, and man, the beginning, like half of that game is rough. Like, yes. It's, it's not that enjoyable <laughs> for like <laughs> 10 to 20 hours. I like, I kept thinking, am I doing something wrong? And then Chris was like, oh, just skip the side missions. And that was a little bit better. But then I was like, uh, yeah, the main story, I think, is really good. And like the way they yeah. tell the story, I don't know how far you are. Well, so I don't want, I don't want to spoil anything. But like the way mm. they tell the story of like what happened in the past and what you need to do in the present was very cool. And I really like it made me think that's what Bethesda was trying to do with Fallout 76 at launch. And they just oh. failed magnificently, um, like I trying to tell that. stories through like audio tapes and stuff like that, which is a lot of the Horizon Zero Dawn story. Um, and like the character Silence, I don't know if you've met him yet. Yes, uh, he is fantastic. Lance, <laughs> great Reddick. character, Lance Reddick, fantastic actor, perfect casting. Oh my god, such that was that <laughs> is great. Um, so like I really enjoyed the main story. I really enjoyed Silence as a character and Aloy as a character. A lot of the side people I could not care less about. Agreed. And the open world for the first 10 to 20 hours does not feel open. It just feels like a slog and miserable. Um, and then it opens up eventually. Uh, which is when I started to actually like really have fun with the game. I enjoyed it up until that point, but I was like, okay, I'm actually having fun now. Yeah. Uh, and then the frozen wilds at the end was fine. I think other people liked it a lot more than I did. Um, okay. Again, it had some really cool story mode, like story beats, but the bulk of it was kind of just like, I don't, I don't like this. 
one of this is one of my biggest and like nitpickiest gripes for that game. <laughs> there is so much white in Horizon Zero Dawn from the mountains and snow, especially in the Frozen Wilds DLC, and they made for some reason made the choice to make all like the focus UI like a light blue, light purple, which does oh. not contrast oh. with snow. Why I would they don't know why they did that? Maybe do you have a like a HDR TV? Yes. Maybe they weren't ex- maybe before HDR doesn't look maybe, like that. But that's holy the only thing I can think shit, of. Ship the Frozen Wilds was <laughs> miserable for that. Like I'm literally like I'm in an area looking for a collectible. There was like one set of collectibles. I was like, I'll do this one for Frozen Wilds. This is these are like interesting and funny. So I'm like trying to do the collectible. I'm in the area and I'm just scanning back and forth and I took like 10 minutes of like where the fuck is this thing sorry (laughs) where the hell is this thing and he was like right next to me the whole time and i didn't see the like purple highlight because it was like against snow and like building i I hate this it's like an old school Um, adventure game where you have to find where the mouse highlights yeah and it was all just like because of contrast and stuff and there's no way to change the hud color which was like ah that's a bummer Uh, i really wish that was there um overall though positive on the game it was fun uh i think over on save data we're gonna do a spoiler cast before two comes out um so we might bring you over for that will <gasps> oh that gives me impet- fun time with that one impetus to finish the game <laughs> yeah i just i just did the uh top of the tower quest where you like okay. go to the guy's office and you like learn more but you don't actually know like the answer so yeah that, that actually intrigued yeah. me a lot more to play and then forget I got lost in another game that I'll talk about, so I haven't been back to it yet. (laughs) Uh, Anything Uh, else you've been playing? Yeah, so yesterday a rumor came out. They're not rumor. um, Psychonauts 2 became available for pre-install on (gasps) the Xbox store. That That is weird. (laughs) Um, Which me, number two Psychonauts fan in in the United States, was like, it's got to be coming soon if it's pre-installed. <laughs> so no. uh, I'm doing a video for our channel on why I'm excited about Psychonauts 2 and why you should be too. Uh, and so I was like, man, I should probably crank that out. <laughs> that's Uh-oh. probably coming. So I needed gameplay capture. So I'm playing Psychonauts again. Uh, nice. So I forgot to record any footage last time I played it, which was a big old mistake on my part, but it's a pretty quick game. So chugging through that real quick. And Can you uh, imagine if um, this is probably not what's going to happen, but if you remember the Yakuza, but it was Yakuza six had a demo that was the entire game and people <laughs> found out how to unlock the full game through the demo. And the demo came out like two, three weeks before the game. Can you imagine if the same thing happens to Psychonauts 2, where people are downloading and playing the full game before the release date is even announced? I that mean, would, it's fine with me. I just need to know so I can go play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I just want that game. So I'm, I'm as soon as they give it to me. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's going to be like an E3. It's available today. Drop. Oh, that's smart. Like, yeah. It's about a month before E3 and Psychonauts. The first one is on Game Pass starting next week. So that times out pretty well. I was going to try so that, I've, my guess. I've never played it. So I saw it was coming to Game Pass and I thought, oh, maybe I'll finally play it. Great um, game. Janky, but great game. <laughs> yeah. So I think I might do that. Uh, yeah, anything so, else? Uh, look forward to that. Uh, and yeah, our, we, I've been working with Chris on our Pokemon custom game that we're building. So uh, I've been in RPG maker XP, the Pokemon essentials version for like 10, 15 hours out of the past week, learning how to do everything in that thing. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie as someone who's worked with some game engines before it is extremely easy to do everything. And that's, <laughs> oh, that's, that's so that's great. At least. <laughs> like the scripting is, doesn't always make the most sense, but it's still pretty, uh, it's pretty easy, but it, they sim- everything's super simplified, so anyone can do it. It's like, okay, you get three layers on the map. That's it. You get, So if you want to yeah. do anything fancy, you can't, uh, which is limiting, but in a good, it simplifies everything way. So 
uh, I've had a lot of fun messing with that and uh, doing some demos to mess with Zach when he finally goes and plays that for us. So uh, I'm going to make uh... his life miserable. <laughs> What's your guys... Sorry, his Nuzlocke miserable. <laughs> What's your guy's ETA on that? I don't... It depends how long Chris and I are unemployed, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so... I should probably tell you that we also made a promise to Chris that if he finishes that, or if you guys finish that, we will play it live on stream. Oh, nice. I mean, and I think I, at this point with like me and him chugging at it, like I think we'll get it done pretty quick. Like it's pretty easy to work with. I'm excited. Like nice. I knocked out most of a route in like an afternoon. So like, Ooh. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to chug through it. It's like Chris is learning, has to learn a lot more than I do because he has not worked with game engines before. <laughs> so like <laughs> all of this is literally like learning a foreign language to him. And then I'm able to just pop in and be like, okay, what is this called in this engine? Oh, cool, I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so hopefully great. we get it done pretty fast. Maybe end of the year. Depends again. Depends how long Chris and I are unemployed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sounds Chris, like Chris is not... uh he just sent me a screenshot of the place he's been sort of temping at, and their offer's horrible, so it sounds like he's still an employee. Oh, joy. Oh, yeah, boy. he he talked to me about that. I haven't I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him, so I haven't I meant to ask him yeah. about and it. And I'll but... be unemployed at the end of uh, May, so. Yay! Congrats. Unemployment buddies. I mean, I'm choosing to do it, so it is congrats. Oh, okay. <laughs> congrats. <laughs> um great awesome i'm excited to play that even though pokemon sucks uh next up ian gibson what have you been playing i've been playing one game and one game only the outer wilds um no it's just outer wilds there's no the is it yeah Yeah. that's why i deleted it and then you wrote it again (laughs) let me fix that real quick (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, I've been playing the the Outer Wilds, and uh, I've been enjoying it. I feel like with this game, what really helped me is that I tried to play it initially when it first came out. I played it for like forty five minutes, and I was like, eh, "It seems okay, but I'm not really into it." And then we went to Iceland for our documentary trip. Will told me that he hated the game, and then we came <laughs> not back. True. No, you did say that. And then I was like, I was like, okay, well, I guess I don't really need to play it because I wasn't super enjoying it and Will hated it too. So I guess I'm okay. And then like all this, like more than a year's worth of like all these people saying it's incredible. It's fantastic, et cetera, et cetera, has finally got me to a point where I have time to play it. It's number one on our list. And I was like, okay, it's time to give it another shot. And I'm really enjoying it. I probably put like four or five hours into it. It's definitely a slow build of a game where 100%. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get like three or four loops in before you're like, oh, not that you get it, but that, that it has its hooks in you. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's got some great game design. I don't know. You can't really talk a lot about it without spoiling it, but it's crazy how that entire world is on a time loop and it persists the entire time and they could have cheated they could have had loading they could have had you squeeze through rocks and load an area they could have had t- wibbly wobbly timey wimey shenanigans but no it's just like it's a 22 minute loop the world exists for 22 minutes everything is there if you look in the right direction if you go in the right direction you will come across something at its part in that 22 minute time loop and it's just crazy and i really enjoy that and it, it also does a fantastic job of every single loop even the 30 second loops where I accidentally kill myself. I feel like I've learned something. I've learned a little piece, yeah. you know? So I'm oh, like, that I'm kills probably... me. <laughs> That's the piece. Yeah. You <laughs> oh, I'm when I walk explode. across, <laughs> when I walk across, when I take the tower elevator and then I walk to the ship, I can fall off that bridge and die, <laughs> which, which gave me an achievement. It was like, you die in less than 60 seconds. And I got an achievement for it. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, at least I got that. I remember being like, like, 10 loops into like a run like because once you figure out you need to do something then that's like a, a couple runs devoted to doing that mm-hmm. and i was like mm-hmm. 10 runs into one one area and like the 10th s- time i just I'm like okay go 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 and i get out and i'm like why am i dying why am i dying didn't put my suit on 
like <laughs> and from then on it was like it was like wallet keys it's like every time i got in the ship it's like suit oxygen go <laughs> like, yeah and they do that little piece of nice game design where you walk up to the ship and as soon as you get up in the ship you are already oriented towards your suit like it yeah. doesn't automatically do it but they know you're coming from that direction yep. so it's it's a great game i feel like i'm about 75 percent of the way through but it's just based on the amount of information I have revealed, but it's also definitely a puzzle game where you have no idea what the ending is until you're there. And so I don't know what the ending is. So I'm also not sure how far I am, but I'm, yeah. I'm definitely enjoying it. And I would say to everybody else out there who was like me, may have bounced off it at first or is not sure if it's worth the hype. It's on Game Pass, baby. Just play it. You know what? I feel like it's like 20 bucks on Steam. It's worth it. It's just not that expensive. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. You're going to enjoy it. That's all I've been playing. What's nice. your most entertaining death that you've had so far? um okay okay here it is here it is it's it's a series of deaths there's ghost matter in the game this is not a spoiler it's in the training area there's the ghost matter you can't see it but if you use the camera you can see it. it's like this green glowy stuff and if you walk into it you die right but i'm not sure if this is a bug or if it's intentional but there was one time when i was going so fast through the ghost matter that I didn't get killed. I just took I just took damage, but I stayed alive. Oh. And uh, again, I don't know if this is intentional or stupid, but I spent about 10 runs in a row trying to go really fast through a bunch <laughs> of ghost matter. And I was like, I did it once. And then at the end, I was like, there's probably another way. I don't know if I was supposed to be able to do that. But so anyways, <laughs> I wasted like an hour just trying to go super fast ice luge through ghost matter. Um, that's probably my that's probably my dumbest series of deaths, but it's still enjoyable even when you're dying. Yeah, the best is uh accidentally um uh ejecting or being outside of your ship in the middle of space and you're just like I gotta wait twenty two minutes now because <laughs> I didn't talk I didn't get I didn't learn meditation yet. So bye. Oh boy. Oh you just uh, use your jet fuel as fast as possible and it switches to oxygen eventually and then you suffocate yeah. yourself oh i wonder yeah oh, i'm an idiot uh mine was definitely streaming the game while zach was watching and he asked me hey david what is your dumbest death that you've had so far and i was trying to think of one and while i was trying to think of the dumbest <laughs> death i had i was struck by the lava moon of <laughs> uh i forget which planet that is the one oh, that's wow. brittle or Brittle, brittle, brittle core, brittle hollow, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, I think it's brittle hollow. While I was like trying to think of something, I get hit by the lava moon and die. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's it. That's the dumbest way I've died. I was hit by a moon. Freak I will game. say, I did manage to get the uh, landing on the space station achievement, oh, which nice. took about I didn't even try. 45 minutes. So. Oh, you mean the one near the sun? Yeah. Yeah. Like manually landing yeah. on it? Yeah. I so I, I had all but one achievement, and when the game came out, there was an achievement that was glitched for all the journal entries, and so mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, I'll just keep it installed until they fix it." And so instead of fixing the glitch, they added like fifteen journal entries, and I like loaded the game back up. I was like, "I don't want to go get these journal entries," so I just have one missing achievement in that game, and it's That's, very frustrating. Uh... That's what you get for caring about achievements. It's true. Uh, so I have been playing. I finished up. We talked about it last week. Rain on your parade. Uh, I finished that up. In, great indie game uh, about you being a little cloud who rains on people. In, uh, on It's on Game Pass, so definitely check it out. Uh, it had a great office reference, as we mentioned last week. It uh, has a great Doom reference. You play a whole Doom level. Good... Uh, uh, what Wait, is that metal gear like it's it's just doom and it's they pretty much doom it, or yeah yeah it's, <laughs> it's it's essentially like you're just first person rain cloud shooting rain at like people oh, okay and, they did a yeah they did a check reskin of the game yeah okay. so and then there's like there's letter, levels later on that are like oh suddenly you're in a horror movie and it's all shot like a there's like a fake intro sequence for a horror movie uh and then they did a uh, link to the past one where you're, you're like the whole level you're like going to get quests and doing stuff and fighting the big bads <laughs> so it was i it got to the point like right at the point when i was like kind of sick of just raining on people they threw in those kind of zany levels where it really got interesting so highly recommend checking it out it didn't take that long so uh go play it 
Uh, I've also been playing Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, we talked about that earlier, so I won't bring it up again. But uh, yeah, similar feeling still in the game where it's like the gameplay and stuff aren't wowing me, but the story's wowing me. So I think I'm going to stick with it. Play a couple more levels. We'll see where that goes. Uh, I bought Super Mario Party because I wanted to drink and play a game with Karen and I figured we would buy Super Mario Party for the Nintendo Switch, in which I was behind the entire game, and then I w ended up winning, and Karen got really mad and said, and implied that I didn't deserve to win. <laughs> it's Mario Party. What do you expect? And then she went to she's bed. Played it before. Stars are how you win, man. She's always been mad because we always play like Mario Two, Mario Party Two, and she's like, "This game's unfair. We need to play a newer one that's more fair." And I'm like, I don't think the new ones are more fair. She was like, I was legitimately like, I was like, wait, I didn't deserve to win. She's like, no, you don't deserve to win. I was like, excuse me? It's a Mario party. Wow. Shy guy for the win. Um, yeah, it, it was it was fun. Uh, I don't know if it was worth the $50, but hopefully we'll be able to play it again. Um, on... Let me know if you want to do a group thing. We can try the... <gasps> maybe the online functions probably oh, not but we can try right. it actually we need to set up i've been meaning to do this because i have uh we have some mario party net play roms where we can play any of the mm, mario parties yeah. over the internet and there's included cheats to make the game to make everything go faster <laughs> not more fair just faster just faster to get through the bullshit uh ian and i did a star wars stream a bit of a train wreck on monday that eventually worked out, but the one game we played a lot of was the original Star Wars Battlefront um, from 2004, which is an extremely good game, and I've still been like, I'll like hop in for a couple matches with uh, robots since there's no online. Um, yeah, that game. I, just I was say, amazed how much that quick. game held up. Yeah, Star Wars Battlefront. Yeah. I played maybe. 30 minutes of it when it originally came out so this was by far the longest time that i've jumped into that game picked it up loved it immediately it holds up very very well and i think will and i are in agreement we think it's better than star wars battlefront 2 the original battlefront 2 yeah. definitely feels better mm, i don't agree with that but i can understand I, only, I think you should retry it you should retry it yeah. but only because on so i learned this so the original battlefront had vertical split screen so on mm -hmm. a widescreen TV, that's great. But when you switch to Battlefront 2 original, it does horizontal and it's way too zoomed in oh, to understand. Okay, so I, I was like, that. how could they do this? So what I learned is on the original Xbox, if you were on a four by three, it would do it would do vertical. And if you were weren't, it would do horizontal. And then once it was re-released to like the 360 and everything, there was no way to kick it back to vertical in a menu. So it would always oh. do horizontal. So that if, if Battlefront two, okay. I think we would have more fun with it if it had switched to vertical, but the horizontal in that is too, it's just too much. It, it's that's horrible too much modern because it's with modern. Wide, widescreen, yeah. that's, that's no, so, that's a non-starter. Nah, <laughs> it's so surprising that the original kept it, but yeah, that game's still a blast. Um, and I, there's like, I forgot we were streaming because we were having so much fun just playing the game and like hunting these guys down. So it was good. Um, also, I beat Resident Evil 7. I was a big boy and decided to play it on my own. Um, it was really good. I, I, a lot of people, even Chris, was like, oh, the second half of the game's not that good. And while I agree, it's like a bit of a bait and switch because you're, you kind of go other places than the Baker household. Um, I was a kind of a sucker for it because it's kind of theme I really like. So that back half of the game was fun. It was way less scary because there were just scenes where like they they you're either playing as a different character or you're playing one of the videotapes. So you kind of know like nothing's when I have that confidence of like I've it's like that you just saved the game confidence and I just had that mm -hmm. the whole time because I was like oh I, I'm pretty much in a cutscene right now so I would just like charge ahead and not be afraid and then something scary <laughs> would happen and then I would be afraid and I'd be like oh um so that was kind of cool uh the story I think could be fixed in a couple ways they kind of imply some things about the bakers that I don't think make sense at all uh knowing them and 
it was kind of I, I thought it was kind of like they added in last minute like oh let's make let's let's try to redeem some people and they just like threw a little story bit mm. in and i thought that was kind of stupid um regardless i have resident evil village installed on my xbox series x right now i'm probably gonna go play it after this uh i already yeah, watched the quick question. look of the first hour <laughs> so i won't be scared for the first hour because i know everything that's gonna happen uh and finally uh i went on after i beat resident evil 7 i went on a rampage on game pass and just downloaded a bunch of indie games uh and the one i have been playing is forager uh you're like this little dude on this little island and you harvest resources and then you smelt things and you earn gold and you can buy more islands around you and then that unlocks more things and as you level up you can uh put it towards your skills so like you can do an industrial skill that unlocks the carpentry carpentry bench and then it gives you a whole new uh bunch of things to do i've kind of like there's sort of progression but it doesn't really lead you too much so i'm kind of lost there but i'm enjoying it enough i have like seven other indie games i downloaded to check out but i just haven't done it yet so that is what i have been playing it has been a lot so i apologize for talking for so long does anyone else have anything to discuss before we move on to the news no i'm good no then it's time for the news which means we get to play the news theme everything's unmuted so here we go Here's the news, we're talking about news, it's gaming news, what's up news? Oh, the dulcet tones, Stevie Wonder. Uh, folks, the news this week was... That's insulting to Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But he can't watch this anyway, so... Uh... <laughs> and he can't hear apparently no. uh <laughs> you know it's those sick blind jokes uh the news has been crazy this week in the fact that there is news to talk about unlike prior weeks uh anyone want to jump off of any with anything Govna? um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just blankly Ooh. staring. You know what? It just Fine. It's like a stupid news week. You know, <laughs> there is stuff to there. talk about, but I don't. This I don't care show, about any of it. <laughs> the show is devolving into Ian not caring and just wanting to get to the the subpixel rating system, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm gonna have to take it away. I'm oh, sorry, David. You, you go ahead. ahead. <laughs> I I will talk about a thing that I literally didn't know even happened until I looked at our doc today. Uh, that is Walmart's unannounced cloud gaming yes. service. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, uh, so let me let me tee this up a little bit just to say that there is an Epic versus Apple lawsuit going on yeah, be causing same. a lot of documents to be released to the court, and a majority of them, actually, I think almost all of them are coming are being released as non confidential or redacted until the companies involved get involved, and yeah. Walmart got pulled into this. So, David, what, what, what stupid thing is Walmart doing now? <laughs> well, I mean, the first stupid thing is these Epic and Apple lawyers that are doing a real bad job at sealing documents. Mm -hmm. um, holy shit. Uh, it is bad. They just don't bother. And, yeah. But it's really cool because we get to see a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we normally never would see. Uh, so apparently back in 2019... Walmart was working on a cloud gaming service and trying to get Epic and a bunch of other video game publishers on board. Uh, <laughs> this on, is guys. wild. Absolutely wild. I don't know how this was kept a secret because Walmart had to hire people to build this. And I don't know mm -hmm. how they hired enough people to like even start building this thing without it leaking somehow. Like, I have no idea how they managed to do that. Like, Google and Amazon, we knew those services were coming long before they were announced. But Walmart, this thing still hasn't been announced. It's probably dead at this point now that they watch Google, f like, fumble and die with Stadia. Mm -hmm. But they essentially approached Epic because they obviously wanted to get Fortnite onto this cloud gaming system. And, you know, I'm memeing on it how, you know, Walmart 
they're not a video game company. They're not even a technology company for the most part. It's super weird that they would be doing this. But when you think about it, it starts to make sense. Because yeah. as games go more digital, as cloud gaming becomes a thing, Walmart makes a lot of money selling consoles and games in their stores. Like, yeah. a lot of money <laughs> off of those things all over the country, potentially worldwide. I don't know if they have international stores or not. Like, or not. But uh, that is a lot of potential revenue loss if everything is in the cloud or digital where they have literally no way to get money anymore uh, from that entire section of the market so they're like let's get ahead of this let's make our cloud gaming service which very forward thinking and bold from walmart i'm not gonna lie yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. it's not a horrible idea uh it doesn't seem like it's worked and it sure as hell didn't work for google who has one of the few companies that has way more money and resources than Walmart. Uh, yeah. And if it's not working for Google and the Amazon one, I don't think we know really anything about, I think it's in beta, but that's, that's really it. Um, there was no way this was going to succeed for Walmart. And I think at this point they've abandoned it, but they are apparently hitting up developers all over the place being like, Hey, put your games on our system. It'll just run windows. So your <laughs> games can run normally. We just need a license, yo. And yeah, it doesn't sound like that worked out. <laughs> yeah. it's, I, it's I agree really with the, the take here. It's definitely, it's a great idea. It's just the wrong person executing it. Um, it's, it's interesting because the Verge article basically says, quote, the company was planning to run the service on Windows with third-party game launchers like Steam, Uplay, Origin, Epic Game Store, yep. Battle.net, and Bethesda launcher supported, which is basically what GeForce now is. Yeah. It's basically the exact same thing. So it, they had the technology right. They had it pinned. It's just Walmart is not who I was expecting to offer. No. And yeah. I didn't know they had apparently acquired like a cloud gaming service called Liquid Sky. Yes. That was using yeah. like they're running on IBM like servers with NVIDIA GPUs, which is pretty much what the NVIDIA GeForce Now stuff does as well. Yeah. Um, and hey, you know, if this had gotten up, might have been the best way to play Cyberpunk 2077, you know. Could have been playing Plus, on a powerful GPU, powerful <laughs> computer, set on yeah. PS4, Xbox One. I think I got Plus, that right. You know, Xbox, right? It's, it's Walmart. <laughs> I mean, they they have the ability to be a loss leader. They could have sold this service for dirt cheap just to get consumers yeah. in the door, which would have been probably bad for business overall and probably bad for the industry, but good for consumers. So well, this, they this do have an advantage, and I, I think the article mentioned this briefly, um, where because they have that brick and mortar presence, people mm -hmm. can walk by and they can sell you like a clip for, to connect your controller to your phone for a couple bucks yeah, and be true. like, Hey, here's the clip. You get one month free trial after yeah, that. If you want to use it, you can pay for it. And that's a very easy way to get people onto the platform, which is where Google and Xbox have problems getting people on the cloud gaming. Because they, none of the retail centers want to sell a preview to cloud gaming because it takes them out of the equation. So yeah. if Walmart is the one that owns the cloud service and they also own the brick and mortar shop, it makes sense for them to just sell these attachments with the trials. They make money either way, whether you buy a game physically from them or you go to the cloud service. So I really like it clearly didn't get off the ground or if it is gonna get off the ground it better get off the ground pretty soon if they're gonna compete with people uh but like honestly this is not a horrible idea <laughs> yeah. I, I was also and thinking... i hate that i'm saying those words <laughs> like <laughs> parents who shop at walmart they would then get coupons and on that coupon might be hey here's the discount of this new release coming out that your kid wants for christmas and you can buy it digitally yeah. on this service and then give it to your kid for christmas or the physical copy comes with a digital license. So yeah. yeah. Then they're like And they're doing it saving yeah, money. And, so. and they're they're doing it the right way. You know, Stadia was like, no, we are gonna be an exclusive platform. You have to buy games on our platform. And this is this is the better way, just saying, no, you, you buy the game on Steam, you buy it through Epic Games or whatever, or through us with a little bit of a cut, but you can play it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Cloud service, you can play it on your hardware, et cetera. That's yeah. that's better to, to interface with the existing infrastructure rather than yeah. create your own like Stadia did. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Um, I wanted to talk about briefly is the uh, Epic Game Store. There were stats released about their free game giveaways. 
And these were yep. super interesting. Uh, basically, title of the game, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but it has the buyout price that uh, Epic Games paid um, the seller or the publisher for. Then it has how many like Epic accounts were created off of, for that redemption, and then how much per unit uh, Epic ended up paying for the amount uh, they gave away. And it's crazy because uh, that is the epic ua cost is user acquisition cost not the cost of the unit so that's for that's the cost per user that they were able to acquire not per right. game right right, right 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 yeah um so uh, it's interesting it's easy to look at this list and think about money that a lot of these developers might have missed out on if they had just actually sold their games but I think that's the wrong way to look at it because a lot of these, they probably wouldn't have sold this amount of those games if they weren't for free. People often jump on these games to get them for free because like, oh, I, I got, I hopped on and got Subnautica for free. And the next time it came out, I don't have to make an account this time. So I just sign up and get another one. But it's still interesting to see like, um, uh, Warner Brothers being paid $1.5 million for Batman Arkham, which uh, six, uh, what was that? 613,000 new Epic accounts were created just to get that. Just to pick up that game, yeah. That's that's like a, what year did that come out? It's like a, was that 2011? I think, a, if I remember correctly, that was the whole trilogy, not just the first game. Oh, okay. That makes more sense, but still. Uh, yeah. And there's a, a lot of other stuff on here. I, I, you guys have any thoughts on this? Some uh, of these are abysmally low, and I don't understand. Part of it, I mean, yeah. I mean, part of it, like, uh, what is this? Super Meat Boy was 50,000 for 1.7 mil entitlements. But at the same time, if your game is not really moving a lot of product, it's not just about getting paid 50,000. It's also about Super Meat Boy free on Epic Game Store and then for sure you get a publicity like, boost etc i'm with you there like it has the publicity boost um there might be people that buy it later you get better word of mouth if someone downloads it plays it and then three weeks later when it's not free tells their friends but like the fact that super meat boy only got 50 grand and fuck what is this game kingdom new lands got a hundred grand i don't even know what kingdom new lands is it's a great game that's what it is and much better than super meat boy I mean, it's not great, but it's probably worth. It's probably like a hundred thousand dollar game, if I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably two Super Meat Boys put together. Oh. I just feel like some of these people got completely ripped off compared to others, and I hope that this getting released helps other developers get more yeah. money. I wonder if it, how much yeah. of this was negotiation. Like, do you think they went to Team Meat and they oh, said, so. "Hey, here's fifty thousand dollars," and they said, "Oh, okay." Versus they went to someone else and said, here, Thimbleweed, they said, here's 50000 They said, no, we want eighty five. There's definitely negotiation. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder if that's just... Like, at this point, Super Meat Boy, how many copies do they need to sell to hit $50,000? Like, is it worth just being given $50,000 or waiting to but sell that many copies? At five bucks a pop, that's 10,000 copies. But, but you think Super is Meat Boy is going to sell 10,000 copies in in the amount of time... In the 10 days, it took probably Epic Games to put $50,000 in their account. Oh, I mean, maybe if it's like new to the store and it's like promoted, like, hey, this is new, but yeah. otherwise, no. But the other thing is that, you know, we're looking at this as they've got paid $50,000 for 1.7 million keys. They didn't have to do any effort for that 1.7 million. It's just yeah. run, the, run the key generator. So it's it's not quite free money. They're definitely losing out on potentially 1.7 million users paying full price but at the same time yeah I, mean, yeah. I, I would just like to see the sales number the how how many days is it free for i think it varies like i want to see how many the the same amount of time like two months before how much money they or how many copies they sold in that amount of time to see yeah. if it added up because yeah. i'm sure a it's lot just... of these companies did that math it's just some of these, I like individually. I understand why they would do it. It's yeah, it's yeah, more yeah. when you see it as a whole. Some of the variances in this, like Mutant Year Zero, got a million dollars. 
Yeah, and for Union Honor Zero got, is a whatever game. <laughs> like, for Honor got sixty three thousand. Like, yeah, like the budgets of those games are completely yeah, different. Which is why I'm just like, I don't. Like, how the heck did Mutant Year Zero get a million bucks? And, and like, well, it's still it's still pretty close to launch when, when yeah. They and I with that. I get that, but and that's why they took the million because they were like, we're not yeah. gonna sell as many copies as they're gonna give us here. But I just don't. For some of these games, it doesn't make sense how low they are. For some of them, yeah. it does. Like I, I, and I get why they would do it. Still, it's just with this. I think the transparency and this information getting out will help these people that sold for fifty grand to get that hundred grand. Yeah, it might not make a difference to Epic, but to some of the smaller indie devs, that fifty thousand dollars is another headcount they can use to make their next game. Yeah, it's like Play That's Dead good. got three hundred fifty thousand for Limbo and eight hundred thousand for Inside. That's crazy. I want give me you can have my game. Give me money. But there's <laughs> one more thing to point out about this. That is when they get fifty thousand dollars, that is not fifty thousand dollars worth of sales, and then you gotta take the store commission out, which is twelve to thirty percent, et cetera. Et cetera. Right, that's just a fifty thousand dollar, yeah. That's just fifty thousand. So right. I, I'm sure they did the math. I'm sure some people got dicked over. I'm sure some people dicked epic over, but like you said, it's it's Slime really Rangers. interesting to see this because, as far as I know, none of these numbers have ever been published before. They have not. This yeah. is the first time we've seen anything like yeah. this. So it's, think, it's interesting to look at. I don't think it was a separate story on here, so I'll bring it up. Like, Epic paid like over 150 million for six month exclusivity for Borderlands Three. Yeah, that's crazy. Which is wild to me. <laughs> And those, they those, would do, pay those that devs money. still didn't get their bonuses from Randy Pitchford. <laughs> Magic. I mean, I don't think it was a good game in the first place, but like the fact that they got more money than all of these companies combined and multiplied by several times <laughs> for six months exclusivity, which doesn't include getting a free copy. That's just the exclusivity to the store is crazy to me. No, but I, I'm trying to remember that document. I think they made back like 100, it was like 100, 120 mil of that they made back in sales. Yeah. I mean, they, they still made a good amount back. It's just like, yeah. F- pick a better game than Borderlands 3 to yeah. spend that much money on. I think you're forgetting, David, that we have taste and a lot of gamers <laughs> don't. So, <laughs> I mean, I have taste. I don't know that I'd say you two do. Oh, have you seen our list? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see you out there liking Roblox. <laughs> hey man, we got friends. I got and friends who play it, Roblox. Yeah. Laundry simulator. <laughs> Ian, how many times have you logged back into that game? Zero. I gotta make more friends. <laughs> oh, I hate this. Uh, Ian, is there anything you want to chat about? Yeah, let's talk about the division. Quick question: Do you guys care about the division? No. No. Next news story, David, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> I don't care about that news story. It's stupid, and I don't know why they're announcing anything with the division because it's just okay, all right, I'll say it. They're they kind of, they're coming out with the free to play. They're trying to do kind of like a war zone thing where they have a free to play in addition to their triple A sixty, seventy dollar game. Uh, so announced a mobile game that's coming out, and then they made a whole stupid timeline of the division universe, which starts with division one. They went all the way back in time to make their stupid MCU cinematic to say like division one, and then we did DLC, and then we did division two, and then we did DLC, and then we did DLC. You are here, division free to play, division mobile, division nine. <laughs> novel and division the netflix movie and it's just like who cares man look you have a straight like solid six mediocre game just sit on it all right don't try and make a marvel cinematic universe out of it nobody cares okay next I, news story. i think my I mean, favorite thing you off. Oh, sorry, go ahead. well i was just gonna say my favorite thing is the uh graphic to go along with this is tom clancy's the division heartland a ubisoft original <laughs> Is yeah. all oh the text God. on the screen? <laughs> like stupid. what? It's too much. Listen, Get rid you, of one of Ubisoft, the titles. Ubisoft not known for good movie decisions. Like 
they penned the skull and bones movie slash series before the game was even near done because guess what skull and bones still not out (laughs) wait a minute wait a minute i'm sorry but the skull and bones on netflix or whatever it is is from ubisoft the game yeah (laughs) what wait is that out and bones skull and bones because people have been watching it it's all over tiktok People are like really? hashtag skull and bones because it's got a big marketing. No, campaign. it isn't. There's no and new. People are like, oh my! The new Game of Thrones is that? Is that the? Okay, we have to look this up. Skull. Oh, that's Shadow and Bone. That's different, I think. Oh, is okay. Now it I... doesn't look like pirates, so I think it's different. I'm gonna maybe Shadow skull and bones. Bone. The young okay. adult fantasy adaptation still dominates. Oh, the Skull Okay, Skull and Bones TV series female driven pirate drama is I based think on the Ubisoft thing takes place in the golden age of piracy. Yeah, it's not it's not Shadow and Bone, that's a different okay, thing. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Shadow and Bone is based on the Grisha novel trilogy. Okay. John Grisha. Yeah, no, Skull, Skull and sorry. Bones is a TV series that may be in the making based on the video game Skull and Bones that yeah. does not exist. I False will alarm. not be convinced of this until it is released. David, you got me so excited there. Uh, just the stupidity of the world. And I'm sorry, I'm going to dial it back a little bit. I would not be surprised if the TV show came out before the game. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they showed like like a mediocre like pirate game with like a little bit of interest on it and, and then everybody's like oh i guess this looks good and they're like back to the drawing board people are interested that we may have a winner here i was like the more interested they've shown for any ubisoft game in the last 12 years i was so excited because they like only good like ship sailing game i mean there's a couple but there it goes from like sea of thieves and assassin's creed black flag to yeah. the other end of the spectrum is Age of Sail, but Age of Sail is sort of a train simulator side of it where it's not mm-hmm. that great and they charge you money for everything. So it's like almost not well, worth it. I'm pretty sure Skull and Bones became a thing because Black Flag was super successful. Yeah, and, and I just, yeah, I want a combat. good... So like, let's make a game about the ship combat. Yeah, I want a good ship sailing game that isn't ship. And like, I don't want to have to go back and play Sea, sea Dogs or something like that. Or the Pirates of the Caribbean game. Like, give me a good game. <laughs> was that a pun? It was a pun. Chip hits yeah. the fan. Um, oh, David. David, you're up. Oh, David. Oh, David. You're up. Oh, God. I, I forgot. Uh, okay. Um, you know, this is just funny. Uh, everyone cried because Konami, makers of mainly pachinko machines and occasionally bad Contra games, not coming to you 3 Shocker, everyone. Konami's not going to make it. Because they're uh, busy working on Metal Gear Solid 5, folks. Here's how it going down. Metal Gear Solid Venom, you know, was all about Venom Snake. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, they're going to come out with... Uh, what was the zombie one? Metal Gear Survive? Oh, uh, Survive 2! Metal Gear Survive 2, it's coming. It's, it's, I mean, it's Konami. They don't make games anymore. Um, oh, you just made so, me realize uh, Metal Gear Survive is the only Metal Gear game I haven't played. I, You're I better say, off for it, from what I've heard. I will say, though, you say Konami doesn't make video games anymore, but I believe they have a quote here from the, the E3 announcement saying, we want to reassure our fans that we are in deep development on a number of key projects. So there's a possibility that they are coming back. I think, the, well, they are, because they've in the past like Let's, couple years, they've released a few games, so, but that joke has still stuck around. Yeah, but I think Contra they are Rogue actually. Ops, which was a steaming pile of crap. Yeah. yeah. So um, so it, maybe they're coming back. I feel like that's the big story in here is that it's not that they're not coming to E3, it's that they want to come back to E3 and they're working on stuff they're just not there yet and it's like I, I, is do you that trust the story them? here? <laughs> do you trust them? Are they actually working on it? That's the thing. I don't know if they are. They say they are, but they could be lying. Do we want them to come back? Like maybe listen. The Jinko machines, who knows. Listen. Sell me Metal Gear. Here's what I want Konami to do. I want them to just like i'm sorry people for your jobs close their development studios they don't need them just license wow them. no just they need to be bought by microsoft come just on phil microsoft. spencer I'm up. 
They're not I'm going not. to because Konami is mostly Pachinko and that's not a Microsoft deal. Um, yeah. What if they spin out their IPs and development studios? Yeah, see, Microsoft if they that. if they split their game studios, basically, I want Konami to no longer care about their IPs to the point of selling them or licensing them to literally anyone else. Yeah. I don't care who they give it to. They can give it to Devolver Digital. Doesn't matter. It's going to be a better game than whatever Konami makes. So just give it to someone else so that we still get Metal Gear or um, I guess Contra. What else does Konami make? Anything else? Silent uh, Hill. Castlevania. Oh, Silent Hill. Castle. Well, Bloodstained is Castlevania now. That's just what that you is. You hold your tongue. You know I'm right. Uh, and then, Bit yeah, I guess Silent Hill sell it to kojima dude just let him let him have it bring pt back <laughs> just let him PT have it stand but... for i PT don't Pen- penis tongue oh i don't like that, don't like that <laughs> can you all. imagine it's so much done <laughs> that's, the, that's the big surprise at the end of the game pt it's penis tongue what does it stand? <laughs> oh it stands <laughs> It stands for playable teaser. Oh right. Oh, that's not uh, bad. And here I thought it was penis time. <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, Konami, sell your stuff. Get out of the games industry. That's all I got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get out of here, Konami. We don't want you. It's like the. Oh, we should um, do uh, an After Effects of the Harry and the Hendersons when John Lithgow is telling harry to go go and he goes get out of here and we just make it konami and then everyone's crying anyways folks did you hear about there's a rumor that io interactive is working on a new fantasy ip for xbox uh this is from an, how do you say is it nibelian yeah uh, well, that sounds good i figured it was nibel right and nibelian is the full nibel. name yeah I mean, uh, I just call him Nibel. I don't use the full name. Yeah, me, me too. I just, you know, I had to think of it here. Uh, there's also a Eurogamer story about this. Uh, it's apparently very early on in development, AAA project, and a medieval-esque world with dragons. You know, I would like to see more things from IO Interactive because even if it's not something I think they could do, it's something I want to see if they could do and then know if they can do it or not because they make very good games they're a very good studio uh and they're they're one of the leading developers right now so see what happens i just um i'm a little worried because granted there's almost no details on this but when they said it's a fantasy game it's medieval-esque with dragons that's just like a zombies game it's like such a generic cliche yeah. setting nowadays that i'm like very hard for me to get excited even with io interactive involved i'm just like uh okay i guess i hope they do something interesting with it you know yeah so uh, i can see them making like a dragon's dogma type of game i don't know why that like sprung to mind but i mean it's a rumor that's probably why there isn't a ton much in the way of details yeah it's just what some artist was like, "Yeah, I had to draw some dragons." And like, <laughs> well, that penis tongue is weird. <laughs> Whereas if they said like they're making a dating simulator, oh. I would be like, "Imagine a dating I... simulator, but set up like Hitman, where you're just in the environment doing all these different things and all these clockworks." It, like, you see what I mean? Like, that's but when they say medieval fantasy game. I'm just like, I hope they do something interesting, you know? Yeah. So. Be- I hope they're able to spread their wings and do something different. They're dragon wings. <gasps> Speaking of, when is Dragon's Dogma 2 come out? That's on that was in that leaked Capcom thing a couple like a year ago, right? Was it ever confirmed? Yeah, I don't actually. Yeah, know. it was uh, it, when there was that huge Capcom leak, it was on a timeline for like 2023, oh, I want to say. That's right. I'm very I need to play through. Uh, oh man, stream series idea Dragon's Dogma. There we go. Write that one down. Save it for the books. Um, <laughs> who's up next? Ian Gibson. Yeah, we need to talk about Stadia because uh, first of all, they had John Justice, product head for Stadia, left Google. Um, it was kind of interesting. It was not even necessarily announced. He was vice president and head of product at Stadia. Somebody uh, at LinkedIn. Oh, no, sorry. 
company provided the following statement to 9to5Google. We can confirm John Noah is no longer with Google and we wish him well on his next step. So this was, I'm not saying he was fired or anything, but this was like, people didn't even realize he was gone until the media got a hold of it. Um, <laughs> but the, I think the big news is shortly after that, it was found out by Reset Area doing some LinkedIn digging that six other Google Stadia staff, including general manager, head of creative services and publishing, staff user experience researcher, graphics programmer, and two concept artists have also left Stadia to join the uh, new Haven studio with Jade Raymond. So uh, it's pretty, it seems like this Stadia exodus has finally begun in earnest. And quite frankly, I'm surprised it didn't start earlier. So let's Pandemic. see where these developers go next. You know, I feel like I feel like they did a decent job at getting some powerhouse developers and you know leaders and managers like Jade Raymond, et cetera. And then nothing happened because they just didn't care about Stadia. So let's let them, as you said, spread their dragon wings and try something else. <laughs> they all oh, went to dragon. Jade Raymond's studio, right? Uh, the six did. Yes, John yeah. Justice. I. It's nobody knows where he is now. I'm John Justice. Justice. That's a streets. powerful last name. I'm not it his. Is. Like Justice like is <laughs> such a powerful last name. The Punisher. Doubt gaming is the future. We're looking forward to partnering with Walmart. Also, you're under arrest. John Justice. <laughs> Always has a bad <laughs> Hi, my name is Justice, John Justice. Okay, this bit has to stop. David, why don't you round us out with a final news story? Oh, uh, man, I only thought I was going to have to do two. One sec, one oh, sec. I can, I can round us out then if you... If you uh, Ian doesn't want us to do any more news stories. You can. It's just, I don't, I, I don't know. Are there any of these that super need to be called no, out? I mean, well, the I only guess... big thing... I guess a quick one. Um, former 343 Studio employees... Are saying Halo Infinite's being made with Grunge? Shocker! Pope shit in the woods. Yeah, to totally total shocker that the game that got yeah. delayed a year is yeah being crunched on because of Craig. And you know, I'm not in the least bit surprised. Yeah. I feel for the developers. We really need to fucking stop. Sorry, we really need to stop this practice. Like, need to fucking stop. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. Just to be clear. This is absolutely abhorrent behavior and it needs to change in the games industry. But at the same time, it's not necessarily a news story, I think, to say studio with game massively delayed still in crunch. It's like, yeah, yeah. What did yeah. you expect? It's bad industry practice and they're in a bad state. So it's one of those things bad. where it's it's bad, but Microsoft has been sort of touting not putting their developers in crunch um, the past few years. And that's clearly oh. not true for Halo. So yeah yeah um it did it, i didn't read this article did it have details about like compensation or anything uh no. guessing based on left working left. in the tech industry in the u.s they're all salary and they will not get yeah, anything other than maybe a bonus depending on game sales yeah well, which fun. will be weird with game pass i don't know how they're gonna do bonuses if they still do them like do downloads probably, count yeah. probably metacritic that's how most bonuses are nowadays, anyways. Yeah. Well, usually they're engaged by a Metacritic, and then the amount of the bonus has something to do with the sale of the game. Oh, but when okay. your game is going to Game Pass, does a download count as a sale? Yeah, I don't know. I'm either. assuming so, but I don't know. Great. Well, folks, that was the news, which means it's time for the... Oh, we need a theme song for the Subpixel rating system. It's time or for the Subpixel. you need an outro for the news. Like, oh. That was the news. We were talking about news. news. There goes news. <laughs> Bye-bye news. Wait, can you, can you do that all in one take? Just say it all again? No, because I already forget what I said. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to splice that one out. Um... <laughs> Folks, it's time for the Subpixel rating system. This is where we go around rating things, including how big my underwear is. No, this is where we go around doing cool things. Uh, we have rated games. We add up to three games per week, and it's the definitive list and ranking of games. There's there's no other. This is this is it. I don't know if you know. It's 
this is us and this is it. Uh, let me just size it up for the screen here so people can see it. Oh, this is the best. Um, what do you think? You boys want to add three games? We want to add one game. What are we feeling? Let's add three games. Add Let's three, three games. games. We got time. Do it. Let's add three games. Uh, I'm gonna just go first. My name is Will, okay. and I like pizza. And I am submitting uh, Battlefront One from oh. 2004. Oof! 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 Boy. How did Control get to number five? You all are insane. What do you mean? Wait. Yeah. Too low or too high? <laughs> too low or too, too high? high? Oh, screw yeah, you. I... Well, Control was good. It wasn't better than Mass Effect Prey, Shadow of the Colossus, uh, Horizon, yeah. or Battlefield Wait, 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 wait. It was much, <laughs> it's a much better game than Horizon Zero Dawn. I don't agree. With that's you a much that. more interesting story than Horizon Zero. Don't worry, David. At some point, we will be introducing a mechanic to move games that are on the list, but we're not there yet. We got to build the list no. out more. Wait. That's on the that's on the fiftieth episode. <laughs> we're gonna do that <laughs> the Christmas episode. Um, oh, we got a while. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> um, how do we do this? Am I arguing this now? Yeah, yeah, pitch us your case and then tell us where you think it should go and then we'll kind of talk from there. I was amazed how well this game still holds up. Uh, it still looks really good. It looks very clear. Uh, I mean, granted, it was up res on an Xbox Series X, but it still looked great. It played very, very well. The classes uh, meshed very well. It was easy to get into a game quickly. Split screen. I know it's an older game, but just like loading that up on an Xbox especially with their sense of backwards compatibility. Uh, it was great. Um, everything seemed pretty balanced. It was, it was, I don't really know how to explain the rest of it. It was just fun. It was still fun to play. It, it felt like it could have been a modern game. Like if that had come out, yeah. it would just be like, it would be like a battlefield 1943. Like you just hop in like star Wars. And it just made me hate everything. Those <laughs> two recent battlefronts were, like <laughs> other than the photogrammetry those games could have been so much better in so many ways and yep. it was just it's still it's snappy responsive and just a fun game and it does star wars a service makes you feel those like big battles like we were in that at at oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. yeah i love running around as like darth darth maul's in first battlefront that wasn't in two right uh, right, it was also in yes, the heroes are in the heroes are different in one than two. Yeah, um, but I can't remember. I know you can play as heroes, or you can summon I them. I can't remember the first yeah. one or not. But yeah, oh my it... god, playing Darth Maul, whichever one it was, God, I love playing that dude. <laughs> the heroes versus villains on most Eisley, and that's in Battlefront Two. Yeah. But that one was so great. Uh, um, I would put this. <sighs> I'm gonna be conservative here. I, I would put this above Shadow of Mordor. Oh, you went lower than I thought you would go. Wow. I was going to go put? higher, but I didn't. I was going to say shove Prey down and have this take seven. Oh, I'd be into that. I I love Battlefront. <laughs> oh, man, Great I misread game. the room. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I would definitely say at least above Horizon Zero Dawn. But he, here's the thing about Star Wars Battlefront. It's not, let's be honest, it's basically Battlefield, but Star Wars. It's very well done, and they added some single-player stuff, but it is not revolutionary or groundbreaking. They essentially took an existing game, and they copied it. Fantastic copy of it. But when I look at something like Shadow of the Colossus that is doing something great, or Prey, which which you know tells a great story, does some great immersive storytelling. Uh, I don't want to talk about Mass Effect Two. Uh, I don't think anybody put it above Control, but Control does fantastic storytelling. Star Wars Battlefront is a great game, but it's basically just slapping a popular IP on a pre-existing formula. Very well done, but I'm not sure it goes. I will say it came it. out before Battlefield Two. Yeah, it came out it, after 1942 and before Two. No, but you're forgetting Vietnam. So there was Battlefield Two. There was Battlefield 1942. There was all the expansion. Yeah, there, there, there was, was Battlefield Vietnam. Vietnam. So it was it was an established new genre. You know, almost like 
almost like PUBG comes Vietnam out. Vietnam came the same year as Battlefront, so that uh, doesn't count then. No, no, but I mean, it's like it's like when PUBG comes out and all of a sudden everybody's trying to make battle royales. So my point is being Battlefront did not come out and establish that Battlefield genre. It was copying no, the same style of game as Battlefield. I think with the heroes, I, I think adding the heroes was a big thing. Making it third person was a big differentiator between that and the Battlefield series. Um, the way the maps were was totally different from Battlefield. Like... Battlefield was all modern combat. This had a very mixture of like they had some jungly levels, they had some indoor levels, they had uh one didn't have space battles yet, right? That was two. No. Yeah, one yeah, didn't yeah. have You're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, because I was gonna say that'd be a big difference here too. I love the space battles. Yeah. Um I'm not, so I'm not I, really I think they did enough different and it was just so cleanly done that I don't know that it needed to do a ton to change the formula yeah because they made it so clean and just so rawly enjoyable yeah and, and to be clear i'm not saying that it i'm not arguing against it versus battlefield 1943 i'm just saying in terms of doing something new i think the only new things it did were tweaks on the existing battlefield formula mm -hmm. whereas games like like shadow of the colossus i think brought something new to the table um so that's that's why i think it's below shadow of the classes above horizon zero dawn will let's circle back to you what are you thinking oh <sighs> now that you have the feelings of the I know, room. right <laughs> i should have gotten those first uh i would i i think i would tend to lean as much as i love chaos i would lean more towards ian putting it below shadow of the colossus because i do agree shadow of the colossus was did a lot more for its genre and it's separating itself away than star wars battlefront did i mean it's it's an amazing game that i surprise holds up but i i would yeah i, I we got our plate thing. drop yeah. it at number nine yeah i would yeah. put it at nine yeah so while uh, while he's putting that in there david do you have a game you would like to contribute to the list uh yeah in the battle to beat brink um i give to you all 2019's greatest hit kingdom hearts 3 <laughs> oh. <laughs> well something's something worse than cyberpunk that's incredible <laughs> I don't think it's worse than Cyberpunk. I don't think so either. Really? The entirety of Kingdom Hearts is very stupid. And as somebody who only played 12 hours of three, and that's my only touch on the entire series. Oh, no, oh, you poor boy. soul. Why? Oh, <laughs> I should go dig up that thumbnail. <laughs> Ian had a whole yeah, series promised. I had a whole series planned where I was going to play. And then every I was going to play like a chapter. And then every chapter, every week, I would come up with a PowerPoint presentation where I explained Kingdom Hearts to other people. And then I started playing the game and it turns out it's awful. And then I just barely got through <laughs> it and made a video a year later. I think <laughs> I it is like, a game series that has I only like, survived on nostalgia. I like yeah. Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and a couple of the spinoffs. Kingdom Hearts 3 is a steaming pile of feces. Like... <laughs> Man, it oh, is man. a straight up horrible game. I, I, I vote, I, uh, David, you can put uh, as far as me, you can put this anywhere on the list you want. I will not argue with you because well, not anywhere, I mean, not but... anywhere, but I trust you to put it properly on this uh, list. I mean, listen, the only question to me is whether it is below cyberpunk or above cyberpunk. <laughs> That's Honestly, the only question I have in my well, mind. I think it's have a you, playable played, video game. <laughs> have you played Brink, David? No, but I would want to play Brink, whereas I do not want to play <laughs> the, Cyberpunk or Kingdom Hearts. The classic <laughs> argument. Here's, here's the problem. Let me explain what Brink is. Brink is a $60 video game. No, it's free is, now. Uh, it's free now, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was a $60 video game that basically had like four or five multiplayer maps. And that was it. Could Here. I play it without hating myself? You might hate yourself I if you had bought so. it. <laughs> yeah, so that's why that's why I'm tempted to put Kingdom Hearts above Brink because Kingdom Hearts has a lot of content in it 
and there were some people who felt Listen, like like it extended played, the story they were into. I played but... through Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah, it is a game whose core <laughs> narrative functions rely on playing a mobile game that was mostly Japan only until like a recent release in the U S that eats up hundreds of hours of your time to even Damn. remotely understand the ending to that game. So out of spite below break, <laughs> <laughs> I, can't yeah, because I played tens of hours to beat that game to be completely disappointed by it being like, did you play the mobile game? That's a gotcha game. If you didn't yeah. get wrecked. I think, I think it has to go back to the question of, would you rather play Brink or Kingdom Hearts three right now? And I think the answer is Brink. The answer is Brink. I would rather play <laughs> Brink than Kingdom Hearts three. My question is not whether it's below Brink. Mine is whether it's below cyberpunk. I know it's above cyberpunk. It has cyberpunk to, based on release literally... alone so broken that it's no you can't buy it on playstation okay, fair right enough now. and i you would rather play kingdom fair. hearts 3 than cyberpunk <laughs> see if i'm playing it it depends what i'm playing it on if i'm playing both of them on a ps4 i'd rather play kingdom hearts 3 if yeah. i'm playing them on like a souped up pc i'd rather play cyberpunk i don't know because even when i think about cyberpunk it's like i beat the game and it's not so much like oh there's nothing left to do it's like no there's stuff that i do anything skip. I don't want to do any of it. I didn't find any of it. It doesn't respect me. All right. Put Kingdom Hearts 3 above yeah. Cyberpunk. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be hard to beat Cyberpunk. Man. Well, I don't think it'll be that hard, but we're putting <laughs> legitimate games on the list. We're not doing like over yeah. the over the road trucks rig racing or whatever that game is. <laughs> For the trucks uh, rig racing. Yes. <laughs> the, the famous <laughs> game. Uh, <sighs> I have a contribution for the list. Oh wait! Before you, go, I just wanted to write down. I I, I like um, David's the battle to beat Brink. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a good. That's gonna be the the published book. <laughs> it's the battle to beat Brink. Oh, oh. Oh, I just need to write that down. Uh, yeah. Sorry, your game, Ian. My contribution is No Man's Sky. Oh. I look. I launched. It had a lot of controversy at launch. Well-deserved controversy. Not a great game at launch. We played it recently again. I believe it was a year ago. And that was after a lot of their patches. I think they may have released one or two more patches recently. They've done a couple in the past year, yeah. But this was still like six or seven patches deep. And that game is still not good. Yeah, sure, they fixed some of the bugs, but like the flow of the game is bad. They added mechs to the game. And I spent hours building one and then I got in it and I immediately hated it because it was dirt slow and hard to control. Like they keep adding so much stuff to that game, but they don't polish any of it. They don't care about how it feels. They don't care about how the user is supposed to like get into the flow of the game to get to that or why they would want to get to that. And it's just, they keep shoving content into it and it's just a bad game. It has a nice aesthetic, but it's just a bad game. I'm going to calm down a little bit and think about where I'm going to put it on the list. What do you guys think? Oh, I don't have No Man's Sky in my spreadsheet, and I totally played that game. It, uh, oh, you have a spreadsheet? Yeah, that. that sounds great. I have a spreadsheet of all the games that I own and have played. I have <clears throat> I have a giant bomb list of all the games I want to play and all the games I have beaten, and then I have per year all the games I've played that year, and now I'm worried if that site's going to get rid of the wiki. Yeah, so that's I might why I did change it everything. Oh. That's 100% why I did it in a spreadsheet. So yeah. my spreadsheet contains game, system, release date, year played, although year played is rough because I don't have a lot of them because some of them are old series, whether I own it or not. Uh, status, like did I beat it? Did I 100% it? Uh, did I drop it? And then my personal rating for the game. See, I need to do that because I need to <clears throat> I need to do my whole like collection and everything. Yeah. I'm just too lazy to do that. Um, see, No Man's Sky was not great. I didn't think it was a bad game. I just thought they overpromised and underdelivered. Like the, what they promised was not what the game was. But I didn't think what the game was was inherently flawed. They just said it was a thing that it wasn't. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, 
And I think I think the other half of my frustration is admittedly seeing a lot of people defend No Man's Sky and say it's a great game. And then be like, look, they made it better. Look at how much stuff they've done over the years that's all free for it. And on the one hand, it's great to see a dev support a game like that. But having played it recently, they did not put in the work where they needed to put in the work. And I am definitely biased when it comes to how much I, I don't enjoy this game. Will, you played it with us recently as well. Yeah, it was still a bit of a disappointment. It's not exactly what I want out of the No Man's Sky game. And at the point we played it again, it still just runs you through that tutorial every time. And it's I know they fixed it since then because that was a big thing, I think, that happened this year. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I I want that game to be a lot more than it is. But I also can accept what it is, and I just don't enjoy that. I know there are people who do enjoy that, but I am yeah. not one of them. Yeah, I just I feel like I feel like they have added so much stuff to the game. And the game could be great in its current iteration. But like, for example, one of the things we ran into was, you know, you have to like, you got to harvest materials, you know, when you want your, your life's, your hazard material suit, you do carbon or whatever, when you got to do, mm -hmm. you got to harvest oxygen to do your air. And I was talking to Jake and Jake's played like a hundred plus hours of this game. And I was like, Hey, once we get far enough in the tech tree, do we not have to do that anymore? Like we come up with an automated generator or whatever, or we build like a little thing that you know let's upgrade our suit so it doesn't need it or we build like a factory a little factory thing that does it and he's just like no you always have to harvest those things and it's just like all all the basics are there for me to enjoy that game it has a mech did i say that it has a mech. <laughs> <laughs> but they just have not they've not done a good job of implementing any of that those pieces of content and refining the character flow so like will like you said when you hop in you got to do the tutorial again you're halfway through the tutorial and you're like i don't like messing with this ui it's not great. I don't really enjoy harvesting, and I know I'm going to have to do that loop endlessly every time for the next however many hours I play the game, no matter what. I'm going to have to do that little harvest loop. And it's just like they've added so much to the game, but they have not refined any of it. Yeah. And that's disappointing. So uh, here's where I'm struggling. I feel like I kind of want to put it below day Z or maybe above day Z. I was thinking uh, right above Daisy personally. You, you think it's yeah, worse like, than I don't Fallout think 4? I liked Fallout 4 a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I think Fallout 4 is a cohesive game. I was not crazy into it, but it was at least cohesive and That's you kind of knew what you were doing. No Man's I, Sky I liked, a lot of, like, Fallout 4 had its issues, but I still enjoyed it a lot. Like, uh, sure, the settlements for me weren't a thing, but like my sister absolutely loves the settlements in the building aspect. I mean, so I, it's. I, I love Fallout, Fallout 4, 4 just has a lot of systems yeah. and not every system is for everyone, which I'm fine with that. Uh, whereas yeah. No Man's Sky has a few systems and some of those are not for everyone, yeah. which is yeah. more problematic than what Fallout has. And I just don't care about Daisy, so I would put it above. I put No Man's Sky above Daisy because I still want to go back and try No Man's Sky with all the updates and see how much more I enjoy it compared to what I played at lunch. Yeah. Will, you were going to say something? I, I was just, I, I like Fallout 4. I, I was, that was more of a surprise at Ian for putting it below Fallout 4. Cause I know notoriously you didn't like Fallout 4. I didn't like it, but I didn't hate it. Yeah, that's true. So I think, I you, think, I think what I was deriving is you were harsh on its release. Cause of how buggy it was, right? That was oh, you. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of someone, maybe I'm thinking of Chris. Chris really harsh on Fallout 4? I, well, I can see Chris being pretty game. harsh on a Bethesda game, yeah. yeah maybe that's what it was. Um, I, I will say, I think it goes above Daisy just because when I'm comparing the two, No Man's Sky has at least made a post-launch effort to fix the game, even though, in my opinion, they have not succeeded. Whereas Daisy feels like they had a killer, killer premise, and they just never really fully developed that into a game. They even spun it off into its own engine, but they just never really built the game around that core premise whereas yeah. no man's sky is at least continuing to do that i agree yeah okay cool we will that slot this in at, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number 16. perfect folks we have done it again uh subpixel rating system new games have been added i'm gonna do a quick read through here 
for you audio listeners on the podcast networks. Uh, number one, Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza Zero. Number three, Doom 1993. Number four, Mirror's Edge. Number five, Control. Number six, Mass Effect 2, pending Ian being the game in reevaluation. Number seven, Praise 2017. Number eight, Shadow of the Colossus. Number nine, Star Wars Battlefront 2004. Number 10, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number 11, Battlefield 1943. Number 12, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. And number 13, The Outer Worlds. Number 14, Halo 4. Number 15, Fallout 4. Number 16, No Man's Sky. Number 17, DayZ. 18, Good Old Brink. Number 19, Kingdom Hearts 3. And the worst game of all time, according to Subpixel, Cyberpunk 2077. This list is becoming perfect because the average game on this list is the perfect number five, Horizon Zero Dawn, which I agree with. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a good five. It's, Boy, it's a good five. I'm, I am I am a little sad now that there is enough room between Outer Wilds and the Outer Worlds that you don't mess it up anymore, though. So that, <clears> that's got me a little sad. Uh, we'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put the how, outer world at, at number one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll think <laughs> oh thanks ian the outer wild. <laughs> yeah the outer wild thank you really nailed that one. Oh wait but you got to change the other one to just outer wild outer worlds <laughs> <laughs> there's there. the best one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay let me we got it we got it <laughs> Let me get the music going and we can get the heck out of here. Folks, thank you for tuning in to Local Chat this week. Episode 18. Can you believe we've done this 18 times already? That's crazy. I hope we get to 311. Uh, That would be awesome. Joining me today was the lovely Ian Gibson. Ian, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter.com under the username... Gibson. I tweet about Gumpla and random news articles that I find. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I love random news articles. David also joined us from Save Data. David, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me streaming uh, every once in a while on Save Data Team on Twitch, uh, YouTube Save Data Team. We do a bunch of content from like reviews to video essays. We've got like two Let's Plays and a couple podcasts going right now. Uh, so come check all of those out. You can also find me on Twitter at M I Z U K E Y 1 3. I rarely tweet, so that's probably not worth a follow, but give it a shot anyway. Do it, you scoundrels. You can find Will Crosby on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel where you can check out all of our hot, hot tent. Also, subscribe to the Subpixel Shorts and Subpixel Streams for stream archives and our short videos. Folks, this has been episode 18 of Local Chat for May 6th, 2021. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and everyone have a great time in the universe. We will see you next week. Bye.